Good morning, friends. Good morning. A very warm welcome to Trinity Church on this lovely sunny morning. Uh, welcome to those of you in the room. Welcome to those joining on YouTube. And uh, we also think of the people joining us in, in spirit as they use the printed service that we send out every week. So uh, however you're joining us, whenever you're joining us, it's good to gather together and worship God. We'll be, uh, if you're new to church, I think most of you are not, but if you're new to church, uh, just go with the flow. Uh, we'll be singing, we'll be praying, we'll be listening to the Bible. And uh, the, the overall thing is we want to get to know God better. We want to know that we are in the presence of the God who loves us. And to whatever you're bringing today, whatever you're carrying on your heart, whatever worries, concerns, challenges, uh, joys. Most of you, as I've gone around, they say, lovely to see the sun. And it certainly is. Whatever you're carrying, good or bad. Uh, maybe you're listening to the news this morning and we are aware of the very worrying state of the world at the moment. And we'll be praying for that later in the service. So whatever you're carrying today, we come into the presence of God who loves us and who in Jesus is making all things new who has a plan. I'm going to begin the service with that in mind from Psalm 46 that says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though its mountains tremble, God says, be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So we come to the God who loves us as we worship. And band lead us in our first song, Jesus is the name we honour. Thank you.
Lord, we thank you that we are safe in your hands, that the universe is held within your arms of love. We thank you for Jesus who embodied the fullness of your love and showed us so clearly in all he said, mostly in what he did, that you love us. Lord, thank you for him and that in him you've drawn close to us. You haven't waited for us to climb up to you, but you've come to us. And you always meet us at our point of need. So Lord, we thank you and worship you today for your love, for your kindness, for your mercy, and that you are working in the world and working in our lives to make all things new. So Lord, we place ourselves into your loving hands as we worship you today and pray that you'll come and fill us with your spirit. Come and lift our hearts into your presence. Come and assure us that you love us and are working in our lives. So Lord, we place ourselves into your care. In Jesus' name, amen. And we continue to sing uh, as uh, we sing, thank you for saving me. Young Church are going to go out to their groups now. Um, I think we've got some exciting things laid up in store. So God bless you as you go.
and uh, we'll see you later. Those of us staying in the church, we're going to hear our Bible readings, two Bible readings this morning, both from the New Testament. Firstly, reading on in the story of Jesus, we're almost at the end, and uh, so uh, reading from Luke's Gospel, and then a story of Peter and John, the, some of the early Christians, some of Jesus' followers, from Acts chapter 3. Thank you. Good morning. I'm reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 36 to 49, and I'm reading from the NIV. And it's entitled, Jesus Appears to the Disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and feet, it is I myself. Touch me and see, a ghost does not have flesh and bones as I as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures he told the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. Thanks be to God for his word. The second Bible reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. And I'm reading from the Good News uh, Bible. A lame man is healed. One day, Peter and jo John went to the temple at 3 p.m., an hour of prayer. There at the beautiful gate, as it was called, was a man who had been lame all his life. Every day he was carried to the gate to beg for money from the people who were going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John going in, he begged them to give him something. They looked straight at him. And Peter said, look at us. So he looked at them, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said to him, I have no money at all, but I give you what I have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I order you to get up and walk. Then he took him by his right hand and helped him up. At once, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped up, stood on his feet and started walking around. Then he went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. The people there saw him walking and praising God, and when they recognised him as a beggar who had sat at the beautiful gate, they were all surprised and amazed 
at what had happened to him. And this is Peter's message when they were in the temple. As the man held on to Peter and John in Solomon's porch, as it was called, the people were amazed and ran to them. When Peter saw the people, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why are you surprised at this? And why do you stare at us? Do you think it was by means of our own power or godliness that we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, have given him divine glory to his servant, Jesus. But you handed him over to the authorities, and you rejected him to Pilate's presence, even after Pilate had decided to set him free. He was holy and good, but you rejected him, and instead you asked Pilate to do you the favour of turning loose a murderer. You killed the one who lead to life, but God raised him from death. And we are witnesses to this. It was the power of his name that gave strength to this lame man. What you see and know made him well, as you can all see. Amen. And thanks be to God for Christ's ministry of healing. In this Bible reading, we have a record of a miracle of healing, which Peter and John made very clear it was possible because of Jesus healing power, not their own. And I know there are friends here this morning facing a range of health challenges. And I would urge you to hold on to faith and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be feeling awful, feeling somewhat down. I had a few moments like that recently, but I am definitely benefiting from your prayers and believe we can help each other through prayer. In your quiet time with the Lord, keep praying for friends, neighbors, family, members who are not well. Your prayers have given me inner strength, peace of mind, and strengthened my Christian faith. Christ's ministry of healing continues today. We have the power of prayer available to us. And one of the names God gives to himself is Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, which means I am the Lord who heals you. God, by his very nature, is a healer, a God of health and wholesome. We have a mighty God, and God bless you, and thank you for all your love and prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Tessa. Yeah, as I said last week, it's really encouraging to hear our, each other's stories of how God is answering prayer, um, how God is working in your life, if you've experienced 
um, God bringing you through a, a troubling time, a time of illness or, or whatever it is, and you can encourage the rest of us with that story, however brief, please come forward. I mean, not right now, but come forward and tell me. I don't like surprises. Um, but be happy to make way, you know, make some room in the service or in the, whatever environment would be helpful or write it out or put it in the newsletter. It's just encouraging because we do get discouraged. Um, particularly some of these situations can feel like they go on and on and on. It's encouraging to hear when God answers prayer in, in our lives, isn't it, as a community. So thank you, Tessa, for sharing that. And uh, We have been praying for you and we will continue. So, at the name of Jesus, uh, every knee shall bow. Let's stand and sing together. So I want you to imagine the scene, okay? The gangsters have got away with it, all right? They've, they've taken a big pile of gold ingots right from under the noses of the mafia, and they're it's making their escape across the Alps, uh, and the gold is in the middle of a big bus as it winds its way along the mountain roads. Okay, and they're all happy to say they got away with it. They did it. 
They're drinking beer, they're laughing, the driver's scaring them by driving round the bends as fast as he can. Then there's one bend that just goes on and on too long for the speed that they're driving at. And the back of the bus swings over the edge of the road and over the cliff. And there, there they are. The music stops and the bus is teetering on the edge. You think, right, we need to bring the gold forward because it's really heavy, obviously. So they all go forward to get the gold and it slides further down as the bus tips back. So they rush back to the front. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Are they going to, what's going to happen? Is the bus going to tip over the edge of the cliff? How are they going to get the goal? Because if they try and go back for it, it will just slide further as the bus unbalances. And the, the leader of the gang, played by Michael Caine, says, um, hang on a minute, lads. I've got a great idea. Um, and that's the end of the film. Okay? I'm thinking, what, what's going to happen? How are we going to solve it? What, what is it? And... and that came out, I think, it was in 1969, and um, in 2009, the Royal Society of Chemistry ran a competition to, to get the best solution for how they can get the gold and no one die. That's kind of the, save the gold, save themselves. And uh, if you want to know how that worked, um, and you can't figure it out for yourselves, ask me over coffee. Um, it's the ultimate cliffhanger, isn't it? And that leaves you thinking, what next? It doesn't complete the story. What next? And in the Bible, the Easter stories, they don't exactly leave us hanging over a cliff in that way, but they do leave us with those what next questions, don't they? You think, how is this ever going to be fixed? What, how is this a proper ending? What, what, what's happening here? Um, you know, you might be, a Good Friday comes along, and we've been with Jesus all this way, and we've heard the stories, we've seen the miracles, and it's all going to be fantastic. The kingdom of God is at hand. Amazing. And then Good Friday comes, and he dies. And you think, well, what next? And it's like, you know, if you were listening to this on the radio, you, you'd hear a voice at this point saying something like, you know, where have all the disciples gone? Is no one left. Uh, has the kingdom of God fallen to the empire of Rome? Is Jesus' movement as dead as he is? Can this really be the end? Tune in next week for another exciting episode of Jesus Christ, Special Agent. Diddle, 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 diddle. And then you think, what? what next? Well, if you hadn't read the book, okay, if you hadn't read the book and you're trying to figure it out, you might think, well, it's not actually the end of the world, because this happens. A martyr's death can be really inspiring, really motivating, and that they died a martyr in the way that Jesus did lends a lot of gravitas weight to their teaching. Um, you know, I expect Jesus' disciples will rally in time and they'll write the Gospels, they'll write the story of Jesus, and they'll spread his teaching, and it will change the world. And it happens, doesn't it? I was reading an article a week or so back where the writer says, as a follower, and a follower of Gandhi, as a Gandhian, I believe, da di da di da And you see it in all, in all sorts of spheres, don't you? A psychotherapist will, will put on their blurb, I'm a Jungian analyst or something, or I'm a Freudian. Um, or any great religious movement that, that looks at the teaching of the great founder, propagates that teaching, explains it, spreads it to succeeding generations, spreads it around the world, the wisdom that they taught. So there we are. That will happen with Jesus. We've got it so drama solved. Yeah? But then you tune in next week expecting that to happen. And what? Jesus is risen from the dead? What? Never expected that to happen. That's a twist. Which is why I think it's true, I must, might say. Um, what, what's going to happen next? What next? And, and, well, you can figure it out, can't you? Well, it's great, actually. Jesus is risen from the dead, so he'll stick around forever. 
and he can spread his own teaching with the help of his disciples. He can do all these fabulous miracles. He can wander the earth. He can lead a movement of change and renewal, and it will never end because he's alive forever. Fabulous. Drama solved. Except if you read on in, in Luke's Gospel and you tune in next week, um, if you read on beyond our reading, we would see this. Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. What? Why? Jesus has gone away. So much good could have been done. I mean, you could actually have met him. You might have had to queue for a long time, but you could have met him. But now he's gone away. How's this going to work? What, what next? Well, actually, Jesus gave the twist away in, in our reading from Luke's Gospel. Um, because he said that the Holy Spirit will come to the disciples. He says, wait in Jerusalem till you've received power from on high. But he sends them out to spread the message of repentance and forgiveness of sins to be proclaimed in his name. So we know what's going to happen then. And uh, as you read into the book of Acts, which uh, Luke and Acts, you can read as one story written by the same person. As we move into the story of the early church, we see the disciples there, they have rallied. They're meeting in the upper room in Jerusalem, waiting for what Jesus promised. And the Holy Spirit comes as a rushing wind. There are tongues of fire that rest on their heads and they're empowered, they're inspired, they're changed. And out they go onto the streets with the message about Jesus. And as we saw a glimpse of last week, but it's also at the end of chapter two, we see that the community of disciples living out this faith, living out their relationship, living out uh, the teaching of Jesus as they share their possessions and distribute to anyone who has need. And then we move from chapter two into chapter three, as happens with stories. And we see Peter and John go to pray. Uh, they met a lame man on the way. Uh, he asked for alms and held out his palms. And you're all singing the Sunday school song, perhaps, if you were at Sunday school back in a certain time. But you think, well, but what next? What next? Okay, here's a man, lame from birth. He's asked for help. And what are Peter and John going to do? And, and well, Jesus has told them what to do. We know what they're going to do. They'll tell him about repentance and forgiveness through Jesus and perhaps they'll reinforce that message by kindly giving him some money. Because we've read that the disciples sell their possessions and give to any who were in need. Drama solved. Well, the man asked for arms and they gave him legs. Didn't they? Peter said, uh, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he went walking and leaping and praising God. <sighs> you never expected that really, did you? And it turns out that the good news that Jesus sent the disciples out with was not simply, was not only about forgiveness and your status with God. It's about new life. And it's about a new world. It's about the kingdom of God being at hand, coming, starting and beginning in you. That new life coming to you today. New life that can start right now. And make a difference to your life now. This man's life was changed entirely as he was healed. And you can picture it, can't you, if you... Uh, as you hear the story, you see Peter and John, they were part of Jesus' inner circle. It was Peter, John, and James uh, were the inner circle of Jesus' followers. And there's this man begging at the side of the road, and they probably thought, you know, we've been here before with Jesus. And they might be thinking of Bartimaeus or some of the other people that called out for help from Jesus. And what did Jesus do? All right, okay. We might remember Jesus' words recorded in, for us in John chapter 14, verse 12, where Jesus said, you'll do greater things than me because the Holy Spirit is coming to you. And so they say, hey, what, 
What's the Jesus thing to do here? Right, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Jesus is risen. Hip, hip. Thank you. The new creation has begun. Uh, and the Holy Spirit brings that new life to you today. And the church moving in the power of the Holy Spirit then acts as the body of Christ physically on earth, here, down the road, there, around the, the other parts of the town, around the world today at different times and places. Wherever you happen to be as a follower of Jesus, as a member of the church, you are there. We are being the body of Christ. That's how it works, in the power of the Holy Spirit, walking the way of Jesus. I wonder if you're facing uh, a what next moment in your life at the moment, where you maybe in a big way, you know, maybe something has come to an end for you, and you're thinking, how, where do I go from here? What, what next? Uh, maybe there's kind of like a fork in the road for you, and you're having to make a big decision about something, and you want to do the right thing. Okay, because you're a good person, you want to do the right thing. You want to say, what does Jesus want me to do here? Some sort of choice. Or it may be that you're just aware, as probably we all are, that every day we are faced with these what next moments. Perhaps there's someone in front of you and you want to do the right thing for them and with them. Perhaps there's just a little decision to make. Um, every day, in little and big ways, we face these... Huh, what next? We're not hanging over the edge of a cliff, maybe, but what next? What should I do here? And I've got three tips for you. So I know, I know you like to take these down. Um, three tips for you from the Acts reading that I think are helpful in, in figuring these things out, in knowing, right, how do I do the right thing at this what next moment? And the first one is there right at the beginning of the reading, and we probably pass over it as just a bit of setting the scene. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. And that's the tip. They were going to pray at the regular time of prayer, and that's what they did. And, and I think that's the tip for us, is to get into that disciplined habit of daily prayer, that daily time when you just set some time aside and you're with God. And maybe yesterday it was just dull and nothing happened and you didn't feel that you were, God spoke to you in any way at all and you think, I might not bother today. Get into the habit, just do it. And it was Peter and John, I think, in that disciplined habit, they were going to pray, it was the hour of prayer and they were going to pray whatever. And there they were. And that it's a bedrock for us. If you want the new life of Jesus, if you want to experience that life in its fullness that he promised, if you want the power of the Holy Spirit, if you want to know what next, what's the next thing I should be doing? What does Jesus want me to do? No moment. There is no substitute for that regular daily time of prayer and it doesn't matter how you do it it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what if you do what some famous person did or if you get something that works for you it doesn't matter if it's in the early morning if it's last thing at night or like peter and john three o'clock in the afternoon might work for you daily habit of prayer there's no substitute it's the bedrock for walking the life of the spirit if you want some help and some guidance on that, there's plenty out there. Um, so come and talk to me. So that's the first thing. Second thing, verse 4. We see Peter looked intently at the man, as did John, and said, look at us. Uh, I've been reading this story for years and years, and I always thought this doesn't read very well. This verse just doesn't read quite right. And so, therefore, I think, actually, that's, there's something important in there. And the important thing, I think, um, is that when you're faced with a what-next choice, 
Look at the situation intently, with intention. And the intention is to do the right thing, is to do the Jesus thing. Peter and John could easily have given this man money. They might not have had any on them, but we know, because Luke's just told us in the end of chapter 2, that there's money around in the early church. They could have gone back and got him something, and that was that. They'd have given him what he wanted. But stopping, pausing, and looking at the man with that intention of what would Jesus do here? What, what's the Jesus response? With that intention, uh, led them to do what the man needed rather than what he wanted. Okay? So the, the tip is, don't rush in. Don't rush in. Don't just react. Just wait, even if it's only a split second, to respond rather than reacting, to respond uh, in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And remember that Jesus is with you. Even if you've only got that moment to say that most authentic of prayers, God, help! Just do it. And then see. Remember that Jesus is with you. And I think if you're... If you're intention is to do the right thing if your intention is to bless the person if your intention is to for that next step in your life to be a blessing to the world and to glorify God um, then that's building with gold that's building with gold that will last forever in the kingdom of God uh, just go with it and the Holy Spirit will work with that okay and it will be good so don't worry too much and this is where we lead to the second the third tip rather where in verse 7, Peter reaches out. It says, he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. The third tip is reach out and commit. Okay? I think there's a fine line, and it's my experience, I know, the fine line between waiting for guidance and losing the opportunity. And so many times I've waited too long and I've lost the opportunity. It's then too late. I should have just gone with it, gone with the hunch. Because sometimes a hunch is enough. You don't need to wait sometimes for conf concrete confirmation. Sometimes all you need is, hang on a minute, I've got a great idea, um, and go with it. And as I say, if your intention is to show kindness and glorify Jesus, the Holy Spirit will be with you in what you do. Don't let the opportunity slip away. Get that balance between waiting on God's guidance and acting. So three tips, one warning. Again, the warning is not to be dazzled by the spectacular. And I think that's the danger of a story like this from the Bible, is that it's an amazing miracle, and it can leave ordinary mortals like me, and perhaps you, feeling a bit inadequate and we turn away because I think this is not for me this is for John Wimber or this is for you know Morris Cirillo or these great people with great Smith Wigglesworth or these people who had some amazing healing ministries it's not for me don't be dazzled by the spectacular friends okay it's not the only Thing. Miracles do happen. I believe that they happen. I believe that these things do happen. But a lot of God's work is just quiet and gentle. Uh, if you look at the life of Jesus, uh, uh, the stories in the Gospels, you know, if you add up those stories of miracles and the great teaching and you put them on a timeline, it's maybe about three weeks worth. And yet we know that from his baptism to the resurrection, it's about three years. So a lot of it just wasn't really noteworthy. It didn't get into the Gospels. A lot of the things Jesus did were just every day, faithful, being true to God and his calling. So don't stress about the spectacular miracle. Don't read a story like this and say, oh, it's not for me. It may happen, it may not, because who knows what could happen when, when you let God take the lead. But I think it can be just as miraculous to be kind, to be compassionate, 
to be merciful. When the culture we're raised in, the air we breathe, the, the, the kind of the values that we're just driven into us by, by the world around us is all about selfish gratification. It could be miraculous to go against that flow and to show kindness. So don't make the mistake either of feeling overwhelmed by stories of the miraculous or feeling that they're all that matters. Never belittle acts of kindness. No act of kindness is a small or insignificant act. Okay? It is a great act. You show kindness to someone, that is a great act. Loving your neighbor as yourself will change the world. The key thing is to get alongside what Jesus is doing because he is changing the world. Okay, so those three tips, get into that habit of daily prayer, wait with the intention of doing the Jesus thing, and reach out and commit. Don't wait too long. So in your life, friends, what's next? What's next? Whether it's a big thing or a little thing, what's next? In the life of this church, what's next? We've got a congregational meeting uh, later this morning. Um, what's next? Where's God leading us? What is Jesus doing now? And where is Jesus going with us? Jesus holds out his hand to you to raise you up and give you new life. So come to him and receive the Holy Spirit. And then what next? Because when Jesus is out and about, anything could happen. And just, is Jesus saying to you, hang on a minute, I've got a great idea. And for Jesus, that is going to be amazing. So what's Jesus saying to you? What's Jesus saying to us? What's next? Because with Jesus, anything could happen and it will be great. Amen. We're going to sing the hymn, The Church of Christ in Every Age.
let's pray together. Let's hear the word of the Lord. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Loving God, we thank you that you are sovereign over the earth. And sometimes we don't understand why things are the way they are, but we thank you that you are at work. And we thank you that in Jesus, in his death on the cross and in his resurrection, we see how you are at work. And we know that what you've begun, even if it's not yet completed, will one day be complete. So help us to rest in that knowledge that you are God. Help us to be still and know you and hear your voice of assurance of love, of mercy, of challenge, of new direction. Lord, in the, our lives, in the choices we're facing, in the challenges that come our way, big and small, whatever we're carrying on our hearts today, Lord, may we rest in that knowledge that you are God. And out of that still centre, act in the power of your Holy Spirit, doing the Jesus thing as you lead us and equip us. And Lord, in our world around us where the nations are in an uproar, kingdoms tottering, Lord, you are with us. And we pray, Lord, uh, particularly today for the escalating violence in the Middle East. Lord, where an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is just spiralling out of control, it seems. Lord Jesus, help us, help the world to hear your wisdom something of your wisdom to learn to pray for those who persecute us, to learn to love our enemies, that enemies in your, by your grace might become friends and there might be reconciliation. For you said, blessed are the peacemakers. They should be called the children of God. So Lord, we pray for peace for you to act and for you to bless all those who are working for peace, that their voices might prevail against those calling for revenge and retaliation. Lord, and we particularly lift up to you and cry out to you for the children and for all those ordinary people who will suffer as a result of this violence, who have already suffered people who have already lost loved ones in that conflict. And we pray, Lord, that you'll be with them and hold them and just fill them with your compassion and your love and your healing. Lord, we pray for peace. And Lord, we also lift up to you those uh, loved ones on our hearts today who are in uh, need of, of your healing touch particularly or of comfort or of hope or of, of that guidance that they need but Lord we think particularly uh, today of Reverend Linda Zikalala in South, South Africa and pray that you'll be with him and with Alison this week as decisions are made about his ongoing cancer treatment 
and that you'll continue to provide the uh, finance that they need for treatment. Lord, we pray that you'll bless him and help him to know that we are with him and standing with him uh, in his time of need. And for others on our hearts today, Lord, we pray and thank you that you hear our prayers and that your love for these loved ones is much greater and fuller than ours could ever be. But Lord, we thank you that we are joined in the bond of your Holy Spirit in that way because you love them too. And Lord, we uh, lift up to you all our prayers, those spoken and unspoken. We lift up to you our lives and pray that you will be glorified in all that we do, say and are. Then in our lives, in your church and over all the world, your kingdom will come and your will be done. Because you are God. Amen. Let's join our prayers together in saying the Lord's Prayer as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'll receive the offertory now. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that these gifts and uh, the other, our giving by standing order in their other ways, might represent the greater giving of our lives in your service, for your glory and for the coming of your kingdom. Lord, take our lives and all that we have and are and multiply this offering. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So, as I mentioned earlier, we uh, had a, a congregational meeting after the service. So, when we're going to have a discussing, be discussing a few different issues in the life of the church and seeking together, well, what next? And so, some news and some ideas. Uh, so, please do stay on for that. Guessing how long it will take, it partly depends on who wants to say something, but maybe three quarters of an hour. Hope to be done by half twelve. So after the service, this is how it will work. We'll meet in here. Uh, you're very welcome, by the way. Even if you're visiting, you're very welcome to stay. It's not a closed, uh, closed thing. But after the service, coffee will be served, but in the Ousburn room behind this partition. But because of the chairs, we can only open two panels. So listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. Go through this door. If you want coffee, uh, go through this door here turn left and double back through the door from the corridor. We'll have a one-way system, and then you bring your coffee back into the church to your seat, and uh, that's how it will work. Um, if you don't do that, it will be chaos, but we'll cope. We'll cope, okay, because we're all friends, and we're all kind. Good, thank you. So we're going to sing our last hymn, which uh, really takes builds on this kind of what next. There's some things we don't know as we face choices in our lives, as we look at the future, as we look at the world. Some things we're just tough to figure out, but there's some things also that we know. So let's stand and sing together. I cannot tell.
So as we prepare to go from this place out into the world where so much is unknown, uncertain, and unsure, let us place our hands into the hands of God that will be for us brighter than any light and surer than any known path. And let Jesus lead us and the Holy Spirit fill us. And let's live our lives to God's praise and glory. And may his kingdom come uh, and his blessing Blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest on us and go with us today and always. Amen. And let's bless each other in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>